powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoweta, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this life changing broadcast today. And I'll be bringing forth the engrafted word of God. I believe it has, it has all the potential to reposition you, empower you to take the lead in the direction of God's will. Anointed for purpose. In Christ Jesus, we are called to make a difference, to take the lead, to represent God in every capacity that he has designed us to represent him. The anointing is not only for the preacher. When I say the preacher, I'm talking about people who function in the five-fold office. You know, someone said, this is an anointed man of God. But most times you don't hear, this is an anointed believer in Christ Jesus. And you can hear the anointed apostle, this man is an anointed apostle. Is an anointed prophet, is an anointed evangelist, is an anointed teacher, is an anointed pastor. But can I say this to us? In Christ Jesus, we are anointed. You, you don't have to be an apostle to be anointed. You don't have to be a prophet to be anointed. All you have to be, all you have to do is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If that happens, it means that you are anointed for a purpose. There is a reason why God created you and you are anointed for it. You are anointed for it. Most times people lack the knowledge that they are anointed for a purpose. But what we do most of the time is that we start looking for the anointing. We start looking for the anointing. Where do I get the anointing? Where do I get the anointing? If I travel to Israel, do I get the anointing? If I travel to Asia? So we have this mentality that we have to travel to a place to get the anointing. But we lack the revelation, most of us, that the Christ in us supplies the anointing. God can lead you to a place for you to be prayed for and be ministered to. You can receive impartation. You can receive encounters. But Christ in you is the source of the anointing. Christ in you. Is it the anointing which you receive abides in you? It is in our generation where I hear people say things like, I need to get the anointing on the life of that man of God. I need to get the anointing on the life of this man of God or this woman of God. But when you read the book of Acts, the early church never spoke that way. There was something unique about them. They honored authority, they honored leadership, but they understood what God has given to every individual. Peter was able to understand what he has as a leader in the church. Paul said something, he said, 
I want to come and say that I may impact on you some spiritual gifts that you may be established. There is something that happens to people when things are laid on them. It is called impartation. Something moves from another person and enters another one. But that doesn't mean that this person was not anointed. You are already anointed. Everything that comes upon you now adds to what God has already deposited in you. If I'm praying for you, it's adding to what God has already deposited in you. God has already deposited something in you. I was not the one that deposited it. Christ is already in you. If you're born again, Christ is already in you. And Christ wants you to walk in the consciousness that because I am in you, you are anointed. Because I am in you, you are anointed. He wants you to understand that you are anointed. You see, when you approach life from this mentality that I am anointed, so when someone is praying for you, or when someone is ministering to you, they are adding to what God has already deposited in you. They are confirming what God is already doing in you. They are helping to establish what God has already established in you. They are helping you to see that this is who you are. This is what God is doing in your life. God has invested in you. So that prayer activates what is inside of you. That prayer activates what is inside of you. This is why when you walk into a meeting or you walk into a place and a man of God, a woman of God begins to speak, most of the things they'll be talking to you about may be things that God have already spoken to you. Why is he doing it that way? He's trying to establish your focus in the direction of the dealings he's having that is that he's doing already in you. The dealings that God is already giving to you. He's dealing with you about this. He's dealing with you about that. And he's trying to let you know that this is me at work. Because he said, in the month of two witness A, it will be established. So the anointing of the spirit is already in you. The day you got born again was the day you got anointed. I said, the day you got born again was the day you were anointed. But this anointing can manifest in different dimensions. As you grow in the knowledge of the word of God, the anointing can manifest in different ways. As you grow in the word of God, the anointing can manifest in different ways depending on your ability to submit to the leadership of the Spirit of God will determine the manifestations of this anointing. You know, sometimes the Spirit of God wants to do something, but we are not ready spiritually. We are not ready emotionally. We are not ready mentally to assess the flow of the Spirit. We always want, okay, somebody have to lead us into the presence of God. You know, you have had teachings on that. Okay, lead us into the presence of God. How can you lead us into the presence of God? I thought when we got born again, we are born into the presence of God. How many of your children tells you, Mommy, can you lead me into your presence? Can you lead me into your presence? Have your son ever come before to you? He's standing before you and say, Mommy, I want to be in your presence. Or your son tells you, Daddy, I want to be dad. I want to be in your presence. Your children are born into your family. From the day they are born into your family, they are in your presence. So the day you got born again, you were born into the presence of God. You are, you are not going and coming. We're not trying to, you know, when I was a young Christian, they tell us, let, uh, when we're praying, they would, say, they would say things like, let us be in the Spirit. You know, when I was a young Christian, they used to say that to us, let us be in the Spirit. But when I read my Bible, that was wrong. We are already spirits. The Bible talks about walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. We are already spirit beings. We are already spirit beings. And that was why the scripture said to be spiritually minded. What we're supposed to be taught was how to be spiritually minded. How to focus on the things of the Spirit. How to make the word of God the priority. How to walk in the light of who you are in Christ Jesus. The day you got born again was the day you got born into the presence of God. From this day forward, you are in God's presence. 
You are in, when you are driving to your office, you are driving in the presence of God. When you are in your house, you are driving in, you, you are living in the presence of God. You are in the presence of God. So don't have this mentality. It is when I get to church that we are now in the presence of God. No, Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ is in you, that simply means you are in the presence of the Father. And because you are in the presence of God, it is an indication that you have access to his power. Because you are in the presence of God, this is an indication that you have access to his power. You, why did I say you have access to his power? You have access to his power because Christ in you is the source of power. The scripture established in 1 Corinthians where it said that Christ, the wisdom of God, and Christ, the power of God. So Christ has been made unto us the wisdom of God and the power of God. Christ has been made unto us the wisdom of God and the power of God. Hallelujah. I'd like to read the scripture to us. Let's look at the scripture. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'd like to read from verse uh, or 1 Corinthians 1. Let's read verse 24. He said, But unto them which are called both the Jew and the Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Unto those who are called, both, both, the, both, both the Jews, he said, both the Jew and the Greek, he said, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, if Christ is in you, it is an indication that you're carrying the power of God. If Christ is in you, that power is the anointing. That power is the anointing of the Spirit of God. If Christ is in you, it means you are Tested positive of the power of God. You are carrying the power of God. The power of God is there. But you, your level of consciousness of that power, the degree that to the extent which you're conscious of the power, would determine the manifestation of the power. The extent in which you're conscious of the power will determine the manifestation of the power. He said Christ has been made. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24, he said, unto them which are called, if you're called, if you're born again, if you're in Christ Jesus, he said, both the Jew and the Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now let me say this for us. You are anointed for a purpose. There is a reason why you were created. And the reason why you were created, there is a, a, an assignment that God wants you to take care of in this generation. There is something God wants you to do. And God have anointed you for it. You may not be aware of it, but you are anointed for it. But sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm not anointed for it. I need the anointing for this job. I need the anointing for this job. I need the anointing. Why are you saying you need the anointing for the job? Why, why, why do you have Christ in you? If Christ is in you, this, that is the source of the anointing. If Christ is in you, that he is the source of all the anointing you're looking for, all the anointing you ever look for, the Christ in you is the source of the anointing. If God called you to, to be in media, maybe to help fix things in media, I've heard testimonies of uh, someone, he was not used to media a lot, he was not doing the kind of things he's doing right now, but when he discovered it, the anointing to do it came upon him. The anointing to do it. He started doing what he wasn't able to do before because whatever God called you to do, he has already anointed you to do it. What we do is to discover it. Our job is to discover what we are called to do. Our job is not to empower ourselves to do it. We may read, we may study, but it is the Spirit of God that empowers us. The God who gave you the job has already empowered you. Now, if someone gets a job in a company, that company may give you a car, that company may give you a house, that company may give you a, will give, may give you a salary, you know, or a paycheck. You know, that company is responsible for taking care of your welfare because, because you work for that company. Do you think a person can be working for God and God will be will not send the person to go get anointing, go and get an anointing, go and get power? No, it doesn't work that way. There is a lot of conflict in this teaching in the body of Christ where people think that, okay, if God call you, this other man of God have to give you the anointing. This other woman of God have to give you anointing. So some people now tell you, you don't know how much I paid for this anointing. You don't know how much I paid for this anointing. Or you don't know the price I paid for this anointing. It's like right now we pay for anointing. But that is not what the Bible teaches. You see, the anointing which you receive abided in you. 
The Holy Spirit was not bought with money. In the book of Acts, we saw how the people received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, and the Spirit came upon them. Wow, I need to teach this. Let's, let's go to Acts chapter 2. Maybe I can make the clarity. I can give you clarity. In Acts chapter 2, okay, let's do Acts chapter 1 first. In Acts chapter 1, then we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 1, he said, verse 8, but ye shall receive power. He didn't say ye shall buy the power. He said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me. Ye shall receive power. That simply means he wants you to receive the power. Then you, you move on with the assignment. He wants you to receive the power. And this power has come more than 2,000 years ago. We have the power of God in this age. And in the person of the Holy Spirit. And the day you got born again, the Holy Spirit has come into your life. Because nobody can be born again except by the Holy Ghost. No one can say that Jesus is Lord. Because nobody can say that. So it is the Holy Spirit that starts the work of salvation in the lives of people. It is the Holy Spirit that starts the work of salvation in the life of people. So the day you got born again was the day the Holy Spirit came into your life. And because you have the Holy Spirit, you need a knowledge of how the Holy Spirit operates. You need a knowledge. This is why you need a teacher in the natural, someone that cannot. By working with God for years, he has some experiences in the things of the Spirit. He can begin to teach you. He can begin to share some things with you. He can begin to help you. But the Holy Spirit has come inside of you. And this same Holy Spirit that came inside of you is also a teacher. This Holy Spirit is also a teacher with the ability to reveal the will of God to people. He has the ability to reveal the will of God. Jesus said when the Spirit of truth will come, he will guide you into all truth. So the anointing is not for sale. The anointing is not something you have to work hard to get. The anointing came with the Christ in you. That Christ in you is the source of the anointing. But what happens most of the time is that most people don't walk in the consciousness of the Christ in them. They lack the revelation of the Christ in them. We always have this mentality that I need to lean on this person to be able to have the flow. I have to lean on this person to have the flow. I have to lean on this man of God to have the flow. I have to lean on this woman of God to have the flow. But that is not what the scripture teach. So it has become a problem to so many people in the body of Christ. They are waiting, okay, when this man of God will die, his anointing will come upon me. Okay, when this woman of God will die, her anointing will come upon me. And they have refused to die, so why are you going to get the anointing? But the wisdom of it is this, that Christ in you is the source of the anointing. Because Christ is inside of you, he has already empowered you. He's empowering you. He's empowering you to be able to carry out the will of God. So when you walk in this revelation that I'm anointed for a purpose, I'm anointed, and then you, you walk in the knowledge of that that I'm anointed, your perspective to situations will change. The way you will pray for people will change. The way you will look at things will change. The way you will flow in the things of the Spirit will change because now you are walking in the revelation of your sonship. You are walking in the revelation of your sonship and the, of your sonship. There are so many people today in the body that are waiting for someone to die before they can have a transfer of the anointing. They are waiting for someone to go, no, we don't need to do that. We don't have to wait for someone to die before we can be anointed. We don't God can take something from a man and give to another man. We know all of that. God can take something from this person and add to this person's life. We know all of that. But those things happen by the help of the Spirit of God. But you as a person have to realize that the Holy Spirit is inside of you and He is supplying the energy. And how does He supply the energy when we pray in the Spirit, when we break the Word of God? When we listen to his instruction, then we're going to have the flow of the Holy Ghost. We're going to have the flow of the Holy Ghost. Now look at the disciples of Jesus. If you look at them, most of them were, Jesus told them, go in my name. In my name, cast out the devils out. And they went in the name of Jesus and they were doing miracles. They were doing healing. They were doing signs and wonders. If Jesus said that to them, and Jesus went to the cross. He died. He resurrected. And Jesus said to every one of us, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. He said, This sign shall flow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. But how many of us believe that we can cast out devil? Many of us don't believe. Some people think that it's a ministry that God has given to other people. 
that there are people that God has given a ministry of casting a devil that they cannot cast a devil. You know, here some people said, what kind of ministry do you have? He said, I have a ministry of deliverance. The Bible never talk about the ministry of deliverance. People can be delivered. But the Bible never talk about, oh, ministry of deliverance. So we need to begin to look at things in a proper context as we don't get ourselves into weird teachings and begin to say, oh God, I wish I'm anointed. I wish I'm walking this power. There are many of you watching me right now that is carrying great anointings on your life, but you have never walked in the knowledge of that anointing. There are many of you watching me right now that is heavily anointed, but you always see yourself not being capable. You always see yourself not being strong enough. You always see yourself not being good enough. You can't put yourself down and still remain strong. You can't be talking down on yourself and still become a strong person. You cannot if you keep bad mounting yourself. Oh, I'm not even righteous. I'm not even anointed like a apostle faith man. Oh, I'm not. I, I'm not. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Every one of us has been called to do something in the body. I am doing what God called me to do. This is why I'm doing it. I'm teaching you. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And there is something God has called you also to do. It may be to be an intercessor. It may be to help more people receive the word of God on different platforms. It may be to share with someone. It one thing or the other God has called you. It may be to do business. There are people who are called into business. They are anointed to do business. And they come bringing some good seed into the body of Christ for to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people talk down on themselves, and this is one of the reasons why they have remained baby Christian for a very long time. They have remained babies for a long time. They are running from this convention to that convention to this convention to that convention. They are running all over the place looking for anointing, looking for the power of God, looking for the glory of God. When will it start? People who live like that will never stop the chase. The chase will always go on all their life. I'm looking for this anointing. I'm looking for that anointing. I'm looking for this anointing. But they have not come into the realization that Christ in them is the source of the anointing. They have not come to the realization that Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. They have not come into this realization that Christ is the source of everything they are looking for. Colossians 2 verse 10, he said, we are completed in him. Kai, that is powerful. He said, we are completed in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. He said, we are completed in him. And if I'm completed in him, that simply means I lack nothing. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. When I was a baby Christian, I used to talk baby. I used to say, oh, I, I need this anointing. I, I, I need that anointing. I need this anointing. I never knew nobody sat me down to teach me that Christ in you is the source of the anointing. Nobody sat me down to explain the differences to me because people can't really teach you what they don't know. So someone will say, oh, I am, I am fasting to get the anointing. We don't fast to get the anointing. We don't fast. The fasting may help us in the release of the anointing. It is not fasting that brings the anointing because from this scripture here we read in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it said, but ye shall receive power. He never said you will fast and receive the power. That's not what the Bible teach. I'm sorry to say it, but this is the word of God. That's not what the Bible teach. And somebody said, I fasted for 40 days, then the anointing that came upon me. You fasted for 40 days, then the anointing came upon you. That means it's not fasting that brings the anointing, is what I'm trying to say. What is the scripture to validate it? What is the scripture to prove it? But look at the book of Acts here. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me. Jesus was talking to them. He said ye shall be witness unto me. Look at this. Ye shall be witness unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea. And in Judea and Samaria. And uttermost part of the earth. Now why was he saying this? You will be witness. Because he is going to bring the power. He is going to release the power. They will go and become the witness. If he will supply the strength, they will go and use the strength. God is not wicked. God is not cruel to, to allow you to begin to look for power. Oh, you have to pray for eight hours to, to get the power of God. No, I'm a prayer person. I like to pray. I enjoy to pray. The reason why I enjoy to pray is that when you pray, it helps you to be sensitive to the things of the Spirit. You'll be quick to know the flow and the direction of the Spirit at every given time.
when you pray, it, it helps your sensitivity. It's not prayer that brings the anointing. But prayer will help you in the manifestation, in the flow, in the release of the anointing. Because as you pray, it helps you, it, it helps you to become sensitive spiritually. So it is easy for you to, to hear the voice of God and say, move this way, go this way, lay hand on that woman. Okay, for this woman, just call her out. Do this, do that. Because as you pray, your spiritual sensitivity increases. There is a rise in your spiritual sensitivity and suddenly you're walking in greater dimension of the things of the Spirit. Because as we pray, something begins to happen inside of us. As we pray, a lot of people don't know this, that praying puts you in a state where you can easily receive good reception. I don't know how I many of you have this experience when you, you were in a particular room making a call and the, you start losing reception. You start losing reception. Then you left the place and went to another place and you made a call where the call was going smoothly. What happened? What happened was that the place where you are, you couldn't receive reception, but you moved. So what prayer do for us is that it helps us to receive reception as we pray. It is easy to have a flow as we pray. You know, somebody said, if you want this anointing on my life, give me $1,000. That's crap. That's rubbish. That's not scriptural. If you want this anointing on my life, give me $10,000. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. I want to say it again. I'm sorry to say this, but I just have to say it. And if you're watching me and you're not comfortable with these tweets, what I'm saying, and you want to unfollow me, you're free to unfollow me quickly. You're free to walk out from the broadcast. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So, you hear the man of God say, if you, if you want this anointing on my life, you need to sow $1,000 to get this anointing. How do I, what was the difference between Simon the sorcerer and when Peter said, rebuked him. You know, Simon the Sorcerer told Peter that he wants to buy the Holy Ghost. Can this Holy Ghost be sold? Simon the Sorcerer was saying that. He said, can I buy this thing? Can I buy the, the, the Holy Ghost? And Peter rebuked him because his heart was not right. And then you have preachers, most preachers today, doing the same thing that Simon the Sorcerer taught what to do. He said, you have to pay for this anointing. You have to pay. How can we pay for your anointing? I thought your anointing was to use it to serve the body of Christ. I thought your anointing was to help build people and empower them according to the word of God. So why selling your anointing? Did you ever have a scripture to validate the reason why you should sell the anointing? Because I read through the New Testament. I noticed that Jesus never said, you want my anointing? You can pay for my anointing. He never said that. He never said it. Jesus was compassionate. He was ministering to people. And the same thing he expects from us. I believe if a man of God ministers to you, there is a need to appreciate him. There is a need to sow into his life. But not the man of God putting a price tag on it, or the woman of God putting a price tag on it. We may have ministry projects to do, but that is not the way to raise the fund. Let God be your source as the pressure of ministry and life will not lead to pain and shame in doing what God has called you to do. So when I look at this scripture here, look at Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 he said, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a son from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and he filled all the house where they were sitting. And there, were, there appeared unto them cloven tongue like of a fire, and he sat upon each of them. If you read the book of Acts chapter 2, the, the apostles, the disciples, the people that were in this upper room, received a visitation from God for the purpose of what God wants them to do. You are anointed for the for a purpose. Discover the purpose and then the anointing will flow. Discover the purpose and then the power will flow. Discover the purpose, then great things will happen. You, God can anoint you to be a scientist. You know, you're able to minister in soul with so much power. Have you ever seen some people, they sing and everybody is, is being ministered to people who feel the current of the Spirit. That's not ordinary. That is not just coming from skill and from excellence. It's coming from the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Can I say this to you? The day you got born again was the day you got anointed. God anointed you. And if you walk in the knowledge of that anointing, you will grow in the knowledge of it, and then you have more manifestation. And God also will send people to share one or two things with you on your way, on your journey. 
He will bring people to teach you. He will bring people to pray for you. To add to what you already have. To add to what he has already put in your life. So I don't want you to go all over the place saying, saying oh, I'm looking for this. You know, I couldn't do what God has come to do because I'm looking for anointing. Because Christ in you, 1 John 4 verse 4, ye are of God little children and ye have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. Many of us don't believe that the greater one lives in our inside. We don't believe it. And when you don't believe it, how do you enjoy it? Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. You have to believe it for you to see the manifestation. You are anointed. You are anointed. Walk with this consciousness. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you are not good at it. Oh, you are not anointed like that preacher. Oh, that is what has killed the ministry of so many people. They never believe in what they have. They have always believed that others were better than them. They never believe in what they have. Look at the parable of the talent. Jesus talked about the parable of talent in Matthew chapter 25. He said, one was given five talents. One was given two one was given one according to their ability. So God anoints you for your purpose. And God have anointed you that preacher for his purpose. There are people God have anointed to pastor a church of more than 10,000 people. He have anointed them. He has endowed them with the capacity to, to be able to raise a church of 10,000 people. And there are people God have also anointed to pastor a church of 2,000 persons. A church of 2,000 persons, he have anointed them to do that. There are people God have also anointed to pastor over a million people. Like God anointed Moses to be able to lead 3 million people. Everybody cannot do that. Every, you, you, you can only do what you are anointed to do. And your ability to understand distance is the key to your peace. Stop trying to be like others. The worst thing you can do as a minister, as a believer, is to try to be like other people, trying to preach like them, trying to teach like them, trying to pray like them, trying to have their kind of church, trying to wear their kind of clothes, trying to have their kind of marriage. Let me say this to you. God enjoys it when we stay unique. I said God enjoys it when we remain unique. I find it difficult to copy anybody's style of preaching or communication. Very difficult. I can't preach like anyone. I can't teach like anyone. The way I teach is different. I can't teach like anyone. I like people. I like great people. I listen to them. I may even take notes from them. I may even learn from them. But I can't teach like them. I can't preach like them because I am not them. You see, the way God has wired you is quite different from the way God has wired others. If you appreciate how unique you are, it will help to strengthen your faith to flow more in the anointing. You are anointed for a purpose. God has anointed you. God have graced you. There is something unique about you. God have invested so much in you. I believe in people laying hands on us. I believe in people praying for us, adding to what God is already doing in our life. I believe in that. But also, I want you to be conscious of this fact that God have anointed you. That God have made some deposit in you. That God has placed some things in you. When God called Paul, he called him for a purpose. And the purpose why God called Paul, Paul carried it out. He saw people like Peter, they ministered to him, but he never depended on them all, all over his ministry, all, all the days of his ministry. He went ahead to the place where God has called him. He went ahead. He went ahead to the, to the Gentiles where God has called him to bring ministry. He went ahead to talk to them. He went ahead to do ministry. He, he respected Peter, but he stayed with his calling. He was able to differentiate between his calling. You know, a lot of people, sorry to say this, they will never grow because they don't make the decision to grow. They always depend, learn to grow up, learn to grow up in the things of the Spirit, learn to grow up, learn to do the things God has called you to do, and stay focused with it. And don't try to compare yourself to this person. Or there are people who are anointed to handle ministry finances. I'm telling you, I have someone who works for, for us in the finished work, and she is anointed to run finances. She is anointed to handle it. That must be the anointing. That, there are things people cannot do except God anointed them to do it. There are things I cannot do. I, I'm, I'm, I can't be a good financial manager for anybody. 
No, no, no. I'm not good at it. That's not my job. I continue what I got. I'm not good at certain things. I know what I'm good at. I am good when it comes to teaching the word of God. Then I allow those who are good at what they do to do in my home where I stay. <laughs> I'm not good at fixing the lights. <laughs> my wife can fix the light. I'm telling you, she can she can fix the light, she can fix things up, but not me. <laughs> not me. You can't get me doing any of those things. To be very frank with you, my wife used to be the one to fix the things, do this, do that, but everybody should be able to do what they know they can do. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. So if anything gets spoiled, I call her mama, could you help me do that? Could you do that for me? So I want you to understand that there are things God has put in your life. Nobody else can do it nobody, yes, nobody can do what you can do. And this is what makes it beautiful when every one of us stays in our calling. If you stay in your lane, if you stay in what God has called you to do, happy will you be. I'm telling you, people of God, don't try to look like anybody. Don't try to pray like anybody. Someone may call you right now and, and say to you, hey, I prayed for four hours. And you are trying to pray for four hours. You have been struggling with it. Why not pray for one hour? Why not pray for 45 minutes? that you can do and God will still do what he wants to do in your life so why are you trying to be like others when God have anointed you to be different one of the purpose of the anointing is for you to be different I said one of the reasons for the anointing is for you to be different God anointed you for you to be different this is why you were anointed you were anointed to be different so stop trying to be like others Try, stop trying to talk like others stop trying to wear the kind of clothes they wear how they look no don't, 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 don't accept low self esteem because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus don't accept low self esteem you are who God made to be you are unique you are beautiful you are intelligent you are great learn to accept your reality learn to accept yourself stop trying to get the definition of your life from others stop trying to get the definition of your life from what other people will do for you or what they will say to you learn to understand that you are unique you are different the way you will pray will not be the way I'm gonna pray the way you will say things is not the way I'm going to say it. That's not the way I'm going to do it. Whatever God has called you to do, keep doing it. Whatever God has anointed you to do, keep doing it. Whatever God has empowered you to do, keep doing it. Your, your success comes in the word of God. But God said to Joshua, you remember the way Joshua led the children of Israel, the way Moses led was not the way Joshua led. That was not the same way Joshua was able to do the things God wanted him to do. And he did it with some sense of clarity, with some sense of purpose, the things God called him to do. And when, when, when Moses died and God said to Joshua, you got to take over the responsibility. He took over the responsibility because God, God look at Joshua. Joshua never went and said, oh, how, how am I going to lead the children of Israel? Oh, I'm looking for the anointing. That was not what Joshua said. That was not what Joshua said. Joshua knew that he was called to make a difference. Can I say this to you? There is greatness in you. There is an anointing on your life to make a difference. If you believe in this anointing, if you walk in this anointing, you will excel. Why do you, many of us don't believe that we are gifted like others? No, you don't have to be gifted like anybody. You are gifted differently. You are gifted uniquely. You were gifted to resolve things. You were gifted to take the lead. Some of you are gifted in writing. I've met someone, she's extremely gifted in writing. Extremely gifted in writing. She interprets things in such a way that others get inspired by the things she writes. You see, can I say this to you? I've seen people who could cook very well. Anointed cooks, I'm telling you. Oh my God. There are people who can cook very well. And you can give another person the same ingredients and materials. They can cook that same way. They can cook that same way. There is something unique about every one of us. Discover your purpose. Then the anointing on that purpose will flow. Discover your purpose. It is by the Spirit you get to know it. It is by the Holy Ghost you get to know it. It is by the Spirit. And let me say this to you. The Spirit of God is on your life to empower you to do the will of God. 
I said, the Spirit of God is on your life to empower you to do the will of God. I cannot successfully do what I'm doing today without walking the consciousness that I'm anointed. One of my leaders was asking me, how do you get the teachings you do? You're always doing this, doing it all the time. How do you get it? Does it mean you write them up? I said, no. Because as I'm teaching, the Holy Ghost is dropping things with me. To someone else, it's not like that. Some people, some preachers have to write a note, a note to be able to teach. If they're out of notes, they are out of place. If they're out of notes, they are out of place. But I don't do that. It doesn't work for me that way. I can't write everything I want to say. Because I have to receive things along the line as I teach. God ministers to me to minister to people. So it, you have to know what works for you. You have to know the, how God has wired you. You have to know how God has anointed you. You have to know what you are good at. And let me say this to you. Your ability to discover your strengths, your area of gifting, your area of anointing will help to determine your focus and it will lead to the release of your greatness. If you're watching this broadcast today, one thing I want you to understand is that you are anointed for a purpose. You are unique. You will be anointed to be an actor, to act movies, to do things. You will be anointed to be a hairstylist. You know, there are so many things God can grace you to do. God can empower you to do. There are so many things. Your ability to discover it will lead to the manifestation of your true success. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray the prayer with me, it means you're born again. And you will not remain the same. Don't ever forget this, that you are anointed. You are anointed. Walk in that consciousness. When you're praying, pray like an anointed person. Talk like an anointed person. Walk like an anointed person. Behave like an anointed person. Hallelujah. He said, No weapon from against you shall prosper. And every tongue will rise against you in judgment. We what? We condemn. You are anointed. When you go to your place of work, work with this mentality. I'm anointed. And because I'm anointed, I'm going to achieve excellence because the anointing is upon my life. That's what to think from this day forward. And when you think from that direction, you will see yourself making great progress. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Say it to yourself over and over and over. I'm anointed. I am anointed. You are not weak. The anointing is an empowerment. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Say it to yourself until you become part of your thinking. Say it to yourself until you become part of your way of doing things. Don't go out there saying, well, oh Jesus, you know, I'm nobody. Oh Jesus, you know, I don't have anything. Don't say that. Don't, 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 be, don't try to betray God before people. Don't, don't make God look like he's not a father. A true father provides for his children and God will provide. How many of you tell your children, your kids, oh, go and get me money, go and get me money. Kids are very small, can't get me money. God, no, you don't. Parents will always provide for their children. God is a responsible father. He has provided anointing. He has provided wisdom. He has provided understanding. He has provided revelation. God is a responsible father. So don't go out there and tell people, oh, I'm believing God to be anointed. Ah, and he will say, but I've anointed you. Don't try to tell people that God is not a good God. Don't do that. Don't say I'm nobody. You are somebody. If Jesus died for you, it means you are a great person. It means you are a worthy person. Don't go out there and tell people, I'm nobody, I'm not good, I'm not gifted, I'm not talented like others. Don't say that. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing. The home of the king is the such of the matter. There is something God has put in you. The Bible said, we have this treasure in the 18th vessel. You are anointed. Walk in that consciousness. Walk in that mentality. Think from that direction, I am anointed. And because I am anointed, nothing can be impossible to me. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. And you will not remain the same. 
I also want to encourage you to keep watching FinishWorkTV.com. FinishWorkTV is a ministry on the cutting edge that is changing many lives around the world. Every day we are reaching people 24-7, bringing God's word to people through FinishWorkTV.com. We really appreciate you for taking out your time to watch this life-changing broadcast. And also, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. Partnership goes a long way to help us, help us do multiple broadcasts. Whatever God will lay in your heart today to sow, to give, to support the ongoing work of God in this ministry, it will be appreciated. Thank you so much for watching this life-changing broadcast. And maybe if you want to send me friends requests on Facebook, it's Faith Man of Weather. Faith Man of Weather on Facebook. And also, you can like my official page, is Apostle Faith Man of Weather. Thank you. Until I see you on my next broadcast, don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you. <laughs>